In Rutland, Central Vermont and Burlington, hospitals now asking for a mid-year rate hike, the price they charge health insurance companies for your care. UVM Health blames what they're calling extraordinary and unforeseen circumstances, which boils down mostly to the unprecedented labor shortage, which is driving up their costs. Governor Phil Scott said he saw this coming. This, again, is a reflection of, uh, of the inflation that we're seeing, higher, higher wages, uh, higher prices for uh, goods and services, and uh, it's across the board. Uh, so while I'm not surprised, it is a problem on uh, very regressive on some of those who are, uh, can uh, not afford it. The Rutland Hospital is asking for 9% more. UVM Health, 10%, all starting next weekend. We'll begin with what's driving the big ask. Al Gabay, thanks for being with us on NBC5 In Depth. Yeah. It's great to see you, Stuart. Well, happy to have you. Uh, UVM Health Network has made a pretty extraordinary ask in the middle of a budget year, and you cite uh, some extraordinary circumstances. Tell me what they are. Yeah, so I, I think you, you got it right. These are extraordinary times. And, and this is a critical time for the UVM Health Network. We're seeing cost inflation rise faster than we had anticipated, and it's uh, impacting our ability to cover our expenses, um, specifically the costs of workforce that are rising at rates that people haven't seen since the early 80s are, you know, are driving the issue. And so uh, you know, we're looking to the Green Mountain Care Board to to take a look at our expenses and, and work towards covering those costs. About staff, uh, you have a lot of vacancies and you, you've had a lot of vacancies throughout the pandemic. You're struggling to hire and you're resorting to hiring traveler nurses that are much more expensive than even they used to be. Is that part of this? That, you know, that's, a, that's the biggest part of it. You know, first of all, we have a great team. You know, we have you know, 15,000 employees across two states. Um, but we've had to fill in with a whole host of travelers, not just nurses, and even in other positions, to fill the vacancies to respond to the needs of the pandemic, you know, to open beds and keep the ICU flowing. You know, we've just had to do a whole bunch of things that just weren't typical over the last few months. Um, we're proud of what we've done, but, it, but it's come at a cost. You have how many vacancies now, would you say, ballpark? I would say we have about 2,000 jobs posted um, as of about a week ago. And you've had to pay your nurses um, significantly more. Uh, that was not budgeted. That's right. And, and we're not just paying nurses more. You know, we came up with a whole plan across the network to try to raise wages, to do tuition reimbursement, to do retention bonuses, to do sign-on bonuses. You know, and you know, as we've uh, as we've talked about uh, recently, even housing. You know, so we're looking at at a whole bunch of different uh, opportunities to impact the cost of labor, so that you know some of these rate increases don't need to happen. So the mid-year increase reflects both the um, expenses for all of your travelers as well as your higher labor costs for your existing staff that aims to kind of stabilize things, but they're, you know, for how, is this, a, is this really a temporary thing or is this the new normal? Yeah, so we don't know if it's temporary. What we did was we calculated, you know, what this is gonna, we projected what this is gonna cost toward year end. And what we're asking for from the Green Mountain Care Board is only a part of that because we think there are expenses uh, that we need to, to work on as well as we move toward year end. So we're asking for a part of that at the mid-year. And again, we'll, you know, we'll go back in the summer and, and see where we're at. And beyond labor, I, I mean, you're paying more for, for drugs, for bandages. Is it really for everything? Everything. So last year when we built our budget in March, inflation was at about 2.5%. You know, we now know inflation is at about 8%. And so our budget was constructed on, on numbers that just aren't real anymore. Uh, in the Rutland Medical Center's case, they cite the, 
Medicaid's not paying more because of inflation. Medicare is not paying you more because of inflation. That they have few options. Is that also is that the same deal with with UVM Health? Yeah, so we're actually hopeful that Medicaid will pay more. You know, we're hopeful that by asking a mid-year, uh, you know, rate increase that gives the legislature and the governor time to take a look at Medicaid rates. We're hopeful that CMS will raise Medicare rates in the future, but there's no indication they'll do them now. And so as we go to the Green Mountain Care Board, we have to look to commercial rates. That's the only, that's the place where we go when we don't get Medicaid and, and Medicare increases. As you know, the, the big insurance companies have been pushing back. Um, you know, they say that it, it's just unfair to ask consumers to pay more, especially when they have no time to plan to pay more. Yeah, it's, it, you know, this is a tough time uh, for us to come forward with this, you know, but it's a critical moment. I mean, we're, we're projecting a $44 million loss. Um, and in order to deliver the services that, you know, so many Vermonters rely on, you know, we've, you know, it is, it's an imperative that we, we cover these costs. Uh, you're also spending some money on uh, housing development. Yeah. The hospital's getting into the housing business. Why? Yeah, so uh, we're not spending it. I wouldn't look at it that way. I'd say we're investing it. Um, and we have a good partner, so we don't actually really want to be in the housing business or the development business. But we do want to create a permanent workforce housing for our team because we are recruiting people to come here that can't even find temporary housing so that they can relocate, let alone permanent housing. So if we're really going to uh, draw down this traveler number, recruiting is the way. And if you don't have housing, it's really tough to recruit. So, I mean, all right. So, does, is that going to make a big difference? Uh, I mean, and, and there's obviously a that'll take months for sure before those first units come come online. Yeah. So uh, we started construction this week. We think it'll take about a year. Um, and you know, we're dipping our toe into this, and we'll do more if we think it's a, a good thing for our teammates. So, and we'll do it across the health network, not just in South Burlington. Are the problems the same across all of your, um, all of your hospitals? I mean, you, you, the network essentially oversees uh, six hospitals? Six, that's right. Are, are the problems the same in, in Middlebury and, and uh, Barry Montpelier? I, I would say that there are, the big problems are the same. You know, we're trying to deliver healthcare in a rural environment. That's tough to do today in America. Um, the traveler situation, as we discussed, is really tough um, financially and operationally. You know, so this is what we are seeing across the network. Um, what about your reserves? Uh, the uh, board and the insurance companies point out that, that you have uh, what are called reserves uh, that one might think could be used in exactly this sort of unforeseen circumstance. Yeah, and you know, we've actually been using our reserves. You know, we're projecting to have a negative margin even with the rate increases that we're requesting. And so, you know, those reserves are there um, and needed and necessary. And if you take a look at, you know, our level of reserves versus our peers across the country, we're not as strong as we should be. That's something that we should be improving, not drawing down. Let me ask you about United Healthcare uh, before we run out of time. Uh, and full disclosure, I have a United Healthcare card in my wallet. Uh, the two sides, United Healthcare and UVM Health, are, seem to be at an impasse. The chair of the Green Mountain Care Board, the regulator, has begged both sides to come to an agreement to hire a mediator, or if all else fails, at least don't let uh, two or 3,000 consumers uh, lose access to their doctors and their medical facilities as of next week. Is there any progress here toward any of that? So we have been in uh, conversations with them uh, right along, you know, as recent as yesterday, you know, and, and Stuart, you're our patient, and with that card, you're our patient. And so, you know, we get up every day trying to take care of people. You know, we need United to honor the order that the Green Mountain Care Board 
does, just like other insurers, and pay us fairly. They often have sharp elbows. They're a tough company. Uh, and so, you know, this hasn't been easy. We'd like to get to a, a contract with them and, and, and put this behind us. So are you talking? Uh, is this, you know, a, it's going to go down to the wire next weekend? It, it's it typically with United Healthcare it goes down to the wire. If you look at their negotiations across the country, they're they're pretty tough. So, uh, what about the prospect of, you know, extending uh, the current contract for a few months if you can't reach a new deal? I think right now we just want a permanent deal. So I I'd, I'd implore United to to you know stay at the table and and work this out according to the the regulated system that we have in Vermont and the rates that we need in New York. Al Gabay, the Chief Operating Officer for University of Vermont Health Network, thank you very much for being with us. Absolutely, Stuart, great to see you. So that's the hospital's perspective. On that dispute with United Healthcare, the big national insurance company, United told NBC5, the goal is to ensure the people we serve have continued access to care at UVM without any disruption. We continue to meet regularly with the health system in an effort to reach an agreement that helps ensure Vermont and New York residents not only have access to quality care, but also to predictable and affordable costs. Meantime, Blue Cross Blue Shield, which covers 200,000 Vermonters, urging the Green Mountain Care Board to reject all mid-year rate hikes. So, in the end, it's Vermonters who will pay these bills, um, and it will be in their increased out-of-pocket costs for patients. Um, it'll be in increased claims for their employers, and increased premiums eventually will follow this decision. So it's, it's a large impact on all Vermont residences. And at the end of fiscal 2021, we looked, and these hospitals have surpluses of over $1 billion. They shouldn't be asking Vermonters to pay more. They all uh, talk about inflationary pressures, which we all know are real. Uh, shouldn't they be able to pass those along just as the supermarket does, the gas station does? What's different? So what's different is that um, the Green Mountain Care Board really needs to hold hospitals accountable for meeting their annual budgets and balancing both the cost pressures that all businesses in Vermont are facing with their expenses. In Montpelier, the board delayed any decision on the Rutland Hospital request, saying they need more information. UVM makes its case to the board this Wednesday afternoon, and there is still time for you to weigh in. There has been very little public comment so far. The address is gmcboard.vermont.gov. You see it on your screen, gmcboard.vermont.gov.